Hey guys, welcome back to this video on how to group multiple resources on the Angular scheduler. With continuation to my earlier video on how to add and assign multiple resources to the appointments of Angular scheduler, in this video I'll be focusing on how to group those resources physically on the layout. When I group them physically on the scheduler layout, you can see that each resource will have their own calendar space on the same scheduler. So you can see here the two resources having their own workspace in the same scheduler in day view. In the same way, if you look onto the timeline views with the resources being grouped, you can see that each row represents a particular resource and the appointments belonging to that particular resource will be displayed within this particular row. Alright, these grouping concepts works perfectly on all the scheduler views and the most highlighted thing is to work together with the multiple resources and timeline views. Now let's directly move on to the process of how to group these resources on Angular Scheduler. So before moving on to the example, let me show you another working example of Angular Scheduler uh, where the resources are being grouped in timeline views. So here each row represents a resource and the appointments of that particular resource is grouped in each of its row with different colors as well. Now moving on to the application, I hope you guys watched my previous video on how to add multiple resources to the Angular scheduler. So if you have not watched it, please do watch and come back to this video as I have explained in that particular video how to define the resource data source. So here we'll directly move on to how to define the groups. As a group property is of object type, so let me define a variable of type group model. So to access this group model, I need to import it from ej2-angular-scheduler package. And within this group data, I need to define the resources option, which accepts the array of strings. The strings are nothing but the resource names. So try to remember my previous video, where I mentioned the name property to be assigned with some unique name. So here for grouping the resources on scheduler layout, I need to use the value of this particular name option within this group data. So define the resources option and mention the resource name over here. Now assign this group data variable to the group property of Angular Scheduler. So that's it. Now save your application and look onto the output. You can see that each resource is occupying its own space within the same scheduler layout and the appointments of that particular resources are grouped accordingly in their own space. So here we have simply seen how to define these single level resources. With our Syncfusion Angular Scheduler, you can display n levels of resources by establishing the parent-child relationship. While defining the second level resources, it should be provided with proper group ID to be mapped with its predecessor data. Let's look onto it by defining another level resource. To define another level, I need to define another e-resource child tag. So here you can see I have defined the second level of resource with the field group ID and I have given the title as group name, given a unique name for this resource groups and assigned the data source for this second level resources. So which you can refer from here group data source. I have defined three resources over here with the name group 1, group 2, group 3 and each have its own ID as well as colors. And here comes the group ID field for the second level resources. So this group ID will helps you to map this particular resource under the predecessor data. So when I provide the value 1 for this group ID, it means that this particular group 1 will map under the resource named Nancy. So as its ID 1 matches with the group ID over here. So as per the group data source given over here, the group 1 will be mapped under Nancy and group 2 and group 3 will be mapped under Steven as both these resources matches the ID value as 2. And next comes the allow multiple property. Here I have provided the value for this allow multiple as true and assigned the same over here which means that you can select multiple resources on the editor window. I'll explain this while showing you the output. So for now, I have provided the value as true for this allow multiple property and the same mapper fields of resources 
provided for the second level resources here. Now the second level resource data is completely set. Now how you will relate it to the appointment object with multiple levels. So here you can see the group ID. So within the appointment data source, I need to define another field group ID and provide the appropriate values within it. So one. So in the same way for the second object, I am giving resource ID as two, group ID as three. So the second level resource collection definition is done and the appointment object is ready now. And one more thing is you need to add this particular unique name to the group data. Within the group, I am adding this group's name over here and simply saving it. Now when you open the output page, you can see that the resources are grouped in two levels. So in the first level, you can see Nancy and Steven and in the second level, you can see group 1, group 2, group 3. Now in the first level, the Michael resource is missing. This is because when you define two levels of resources and if your second level doesn't have any mapper to the first level, so it will be automatically truncated. And you can look on to the appointments that are grouped relevantly under its appropriate resources. Whenever you have multiple levels of grouping, the colors of appointments are usually decided based on the colors assigned to the innermost level of resource. So the colors assigned to group 1, group 2 and group 3 will be reflected on the appointments now. One more thing you should understand here is the order of resource names that you pass over here. Depending on this particular order, the resources will be grouped on the scheduler layout. So the first resource name will act as a parent and the second resource name will act as the child to be mapped under the given parent resource. Now let me remove the height and width properties of scheduler and show you the resource layout in mobile mode. Since the multiple resources and grouping is hard to view on the mobile mode, there is a compact mode available to view the multiple resources. So here you can see the angular scheduler in compact mode. So when I click on this particular icon, you can navigate between the resources. In case if you want to switch off this particular compact view mode, within the group property, you can set enable compact view as false. So now when I look onto the same layout in mobile mode, you can see the shrinked version and you need to scroll to the right to have a look on the entire resources. Now let me tell you how this allow multiple option will work. Now when I double click on the cells, you can see here that the group name will allow you to choose multiple options. But the first resource names, you can choose any one of the options at a time. This is because I have provided the allow multiple property as true for this second level resource. So it allows me to select multiple resources for this group name. Here you can see the dates are grouped under the resources. So it is possible to group the resources under each of these dates. Let's see how to do that. You simply need to set the by date property as true within the group option. So I'm saving this and now you can see under each of these dates, the resources are grouped separately. Apart from this, you have another important functionality with grouping that is the linked events. You can make the same appointment to be booked for multiple persons so that you can allow the editor crude actions performed on those events altogether. To enable such functionality, you need to set the allow group property as true. Let me show you how to do that. Here within the group option, I need to define the property allow group edit and set it to true. Simply save it. Now when I create an appointment with multiple resources selected and simply saving this, you can notice the two appointments grouped under the respective resources. And when I try to edit this particular appointment with different title and change in a time, I'm saving it. And you can notice that both the appointments are reflecting the changes. In the same way, when I drag a single appointment, you can see that both the appointments are getting changed and if I resize that appointment, you can also notice the same changes getting reflected on both the appointments altogether. So far we have seen in the calendar views, just look on to the timeline week 
So you can see the layout difference. Group 1 is placed under Nancy and group 2 and 3 is placed under Stephen. And you can see the appointments that are grouped under them in a separate row. So these are some of the important features you should know when trying to make use of resources and grouping feature of Angular Scheduler. You can see plenty of live examples that showcases this particular multiple resources and resource grouping in our online demo site. So you can see here the room scheduler showing the grouping concept done in timeline views and the shared events and here each resource displaying different working days on the same layout. Here you can see the height of the resource rows will automatically adapt based on the appointment count it holds. So if it has more appointments on the same time range you can see that particular row expanding as per the need. You can look on to the horizontal grouping and the timeline grouping with two levels and this is date wise grouping. This particular date wise grouping is applicable only on the calendar views and you can also check the agenda view how the multiple resources will be grouped in agenda view from here. So I'm ending this video by here. If you felt this video as helpful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel as well to receive more updates. Also leave your comments below with what other topics you are looking forward to know about. So I'll try to cover them in my next upcoming videos. Thank you so much for listening to this video and stay tuned for my next video. Thank you.